Hi everyone, my name is Emma Hernandez and welcome back to my podcast, Swimming Into Books. In this episode, we will dive into Margaret Ann Wood's The Handmaid's Tale and The Testaments. Here are my special guests, Yuvia, Ju- Jocelyn, Alexa, who will be helping me analyze the books. The Handmaid's Tale is a dystopian novel that features Alfred, the main character, story as she attempts to escape the intense patriarchal society of Gilead that has almost completely removed women's rights. Edward uses different literary decisions in order to allow the audience to understand the message she attempts to convey. For example, in The Handmaid's Tale, we learn different themes and concepts that grabs the reader's attention. One of them is the oppression of women, one of the book's main topics. It Im- eliminates the effects of a culture in which women are confined to their reproductive roles, deprived of power and vulnerable to male dominance. Often muses on how invisible women like her are in Gilead society. We were the people who were not in the papers. We lived in the blank white spaces of the edges of the print. It gave us more freedom. We lived in the gaps between the stories. This means that women live in invisible spaces away from the monitoring and supervision in the government and are neither acknowledged as individuals nor covered in newspapers in chapter 10. Yeah, I totally agree. And also in The Handmaid's Soul of chapter five, Alfred recalls her life before Gilead, emphasizing the stark differences between her past and the harsh world she now inhabits, demonstrating the harsh reality of women's lives being controlled by the regime. As Divya said, in The Handmaid's Tale, Alfred feels more in charge of her story and consequently her fate when she presents her encounters as a tale she is narrating. In chapter seven, she states, I would like to believe this story I'm telling. I need to believe it. I must believe it. Those who believe such stories are only stories have a better chance. It's a story I'm telling. Then I have control over the ending. Alfred feels somewhat empowered by the thought that she can decide how she how her story ends, giving her the belief that she can influence her destiny without being powerless over those who hold her in chapter six. Yeah, also something else that I found interesting is that Alfred depicts a social structure in which she lives. Alfred illustrates the loss of personal freedom in chapter five, page 33, by disclosing Gilead's severe dress code and surveillance apprentice. The novel's key concept of isolation and control are emphasized by these details, which also are highlighted the terrible reality of life in Gilead. We would like to take a break and discuss our sponsor for this Swimming Into Books episode, Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble is an American bookstore that provides people with over 5 million books, 3.6 million ebooks, and 300,000 audiobooks. I have partnered with Barnes & Noble to help give books to all of you guys. So if you use the code DIVE online, you will receive 30% discount on your next purchase. Okay guys, let's dive back into our episode. All right, so in this part, we're going to be talking about the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale, The Testaments, where we also see similar themes and situations explored. In The Testaments, Atwood creates a story using three separate points of view, all told from a first-person perspective, and chooses a character we've already seemed to know, Aunt Lydia, and two other women, Agnes and Daisy, who are sisters. I think it is interesting to see how this decision allows us to see the story completely as it gives us three separate roles within the conspiracy to dismantle Gilead and what their driving forces were. As in the Testaments, Aunt Lydia wrestles with the significant transformations brought about by her her rise to authority in harsh Gilead government. She states in chapter 6, I have become swollen with power, true, but also nebulous with it, formless, shape-shifting. I am everywhere and nowhere, even in the minds of the commanders. I cast an unsettling shadow. How can I regain myself? This line captures the inner dilemma that those obsessed with power experience as they struggle to be true to themselves, despite all the authority, demands, and desires. In chapter 6. I completely agree. We also see how on an, how one of the other narrators go through a similar breakthrough. Agnes's beliefs about Gilead slowly begin to be known as her story continues. In her story, we learn that she has secretly harbored doubts about decisions made by Gilead's leaders, specifically with the treatment of women. Slowly, we see how the events she goes through strengthens this belief to where she ends up giving up the power she received as an aunt and completely commits to their cause. I feel that her character progression is interesting because it's similar to many other historical figures who often gave up everything in hopes of creating a better society. 
Yes, I like how you pointed out that the book specifically reveals her inner resolve to survive and ultimately undermine the oppressive regime of Gilead from within. We see this when she states, though I realized how very wrong I had been about this and many other things on the day that I was arrested. This quote shed light on Aunt Lydia's personal growth and her introspective analysis of her prior deeds and convictions. Aunt Lydia admits that she has experienced a profound change of perspective and that her prior acts and ideas were either incorrect or defective in some other way. The line realized how very wrong I had been alludes to a deep period of introspection and self-awareness in chapter six. I completely agree. We also see this type of contradiction through the metaphor of baby Nicole. Baby Nicole is a real person. However, the manipulation of her story through Gillian that she receives from her scandal of being lost sparks both hope to the people outside of Gilead and also becomes a symbol of the world's cruelty as the as the Gillians inside try to treat it as something that is something to be afraid of for the outside world. Her story is used as two conflicting symbols and it is interesting to see as it is similar to many other contradictions, such as Aunt Lydia's personality or the varying perspectives of Gilead until eventually stopped when Daisy learns that she is baby Nicole and uses it to help op- oppose the regime. I completely agree, especially with the use of symbols. They also include, the testaments also include foreshadowing, which mainly serves to increase suspense and expectation in the novel. The narrators all tell their stories in the past tense, but they also regularly reference things that will happen in the future. These allusions heighten the story suspense as it develops by giving the reader a vague idea of what will come. For instance, when Daisy learns from Garth how to deliver a hard stopper punch, and then later on she employs her new skill in the novel to incapacitate Aunt Validia in chapter 33. Overall, Margaret Ann Wood's The Handmaid's Tale and The Testaments allow the audience to see con- the consequences of complacency and- through the character's plot and other literary aspects. I was description of totalitarian regimen that attempts to control thought and behavior through hypo- hypocrisy and manipulation of power allows us to recognize similar aspects in today's society and can serve as another example of the dangers of staying silent. We would highly recommend everyone who is interested in dystopian or feminist literature to read the two books at, at, as Aunt Wood does an amazing job of highlighting important things while creating interesting stories. Thank you guys for listening and make sure to tune in next time for another episode of Swimming Into Books.